Hello viewers and welcome again to Know Your Role Entertainment. My name is Bevan. One of the very first videos that I did for this channel was an unboxing video for Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game. Now we only unboxed the core edition because this is what I had, but I did say in that video that I had backed the Kickstarter all in. Well, it's taken a long time for it to be finished. 2020 was definitely an interesting year for board games, but it's finally here. So, how many expansions did I get for Horizon Zero Dawn, the board game? Let's take a look. There's more. Yeah, this is expansions for this. This is going to be awesome. Well, we got to start somewhere, so why don't we start with the Soldiers of the Sun expansion. It's got the behemoth on the front. That's going to be your main model for the uh, expansion. It's one of the nice things that I like about the board game that I've seen so far. The main monster on the front is the main monster in the box, which makes a whole lot of sense. Instruction manual, nice and colorful, the same way as the original core game was. Some more tiles. This looks like a little bit more colorful area than the original game, which was more desert. Monster cards explaining the monster details. More weapons cards. And it does look like they have codes in the bottom corner so you can easily split out the expansions from the core game. Always a good feature. But let's look at these models. Got the Longhorn. Looks like we got four of those. And we got this big guy, which I'm not remembering their name. I think this is a trampler. And then, of course, the big model. The detail on this is nuts! Okay. If I don't get these painted, I am going to hate myself. This is a game I've got to paint. I also love how they have the Horizon Zero Dawn logo stamped on the bottom. Fantastic. Does that go that way? Yeah, that does. Well, yeah. we'll keep it that way for now. And then two more player characters. I believe those are both Karja soldiers. So that was that first box, the Soldiers of the Sun. Next. All right, the next expansion that we have is the Sacred Land expansion. It looks like it's a bellow back as the main monster. And then we have two hunters. I believe these are Nora hunters this time. More watchers, but these are actual red eye watchers. So they have a slightly different head on the front of them. couple of long legs. These little bugger chickens are... <laughs> if you've ever played the uh, the, board, the video game, these are kind of crazy little monsters. If I remember correctly, these are called stalkers. I love how they got the very long tail. Pretty good detail on it. There's a slight edging from the uh, the molding process but that can easily be filed down snap maws if you've ever been afraid of an alligator how about a 30 foot long alligator coming after you these are kind of crazy in the uh, video game I'm hoping that the board game is going to be just as nuts 
And then, of course, the bellow back. Oh, man, these are nuts. Oh, I'm so giddy. Now, this is a retail package. This will be sold in retail. But you notice that there's two bellow backs. Well, in the video game, there's a bellow back that deals with fire damage, and then there's a bellow back that deals with ice damage. In the original Kickstarter pitch, they were only going to give us one bellow back, but due to Kickstarter backing, they decided to add a second bellow back to this package. So if you're a painter, you can paint one fire and one ice, which I think is awesome. But anyway, that's the this box, the Sacred Land expansion. Moving on to the next one, the Forge and Hammer expansion. My guess is that this is going to be themed on Azaram Hunters. It's a Ravager on the front, by the way. Then we got the Ravagers. These look a little bit like the Sawtooths in the core game, but they are different. And then Longhorns, the Gazelles. <laughs> um, these are... They're very flighty in the uh, video game, so maybe they'll be flighty in the board game as well. Glintocks. You know, I like that despite the fact that it's considered a smaller in-game miniature, that they did spread the wings out. Sometimes it makes it a little bit more interesting to play, but it makes the miniature so much better looking than just a miniature sitting there, um, confined to its base. And then the Chargers with their nice big horns. Be able to run after some bad guys or run after some hunters I should say and then our two hunters both of them Azaram and that's everything for the forge and hammer expansion moving right along we have the lawless badlands expansion now the lawless badlands expansion is supposed to represent the parts of the video game where Aloy is taking on bandit camps. So rather than seeing large monster miniatures in this one, I expect to see a lot of smaller bandit characters. But let's open up and find out. And then all of these little creatures. There is a ton of bandit miniatures in here, and I'm not going to go over all of them. Um, but, uh, yeah, and it looks like we've got one hero that managed to go into this uh, box here, and everything else is going to be your bandits. So, you know, if you want a, uh, a slightly different game, more of a uh, skirmish arena type where you're going up against a whole bunch of different little guys, well, you have it with this expansion. The next expansion for us to look at is the Frozen Wilds expansion. Now, the Frozen Wilds on the original video game was actually DLC. It added a significant chunk to the video game uh, where you got to explore a area covered in snow and ice and frost and stuff. Hence, of course, Frozen Wilds. Looks like we got two hero characters in here. And again, the usual, here's a bunch of cards with those card codes saying that they belong to this expansion. We have two frost claws. They're basically giant polar bears that are robots and come and kick your butt. And then I'm spacing on the name of this guy. Uh, we'll find out and I'll put a uh, comment on the uh, on the screen, but kind of looks like a big jackal with big ears. So coming after you, very nice detail. Now I do notice on the character sheet that it's talking about a demonic shellwalker. Now the shellwalker miniatures are in the core game, so this allows a different version of the same enemy, which is really nice. Give you more options. And options are always good with these type of games. 
So that was the Frozen Wilds expansion, and we'll move on to the next one. So the previous expansions were all based off of scenarios happening in the game. Now we're going to move on to boss fights. These are basically where they have a specialized tile to generate the arena, and you're only going to deal with the one big boss character here. Basically super fights. Um, Dark Souls, the previous game that uh, Steamforge games made, also had a bunch of dragons and, and other boss characters, so kind of following the same theme as that. So the first one we're looking at is the Rock Breaker. Now anybody who's played the uh, original game knows that this Rock Breaker character is basically the sandworm from Dune uh, as a giant monstrosity robot. So let's take a look and see inside. Of course the boss character. Okay, that has 50 hit points if you can see that. 50. 50 hit points in the fight. That's crazy. More cards. Uh, tunnel cards. Okay, that's interesting. Since the Rock Breaker can tunnel into the dirt, my guess is that these cards help determine where it pops out. But of course, let's take a look at the model itself. Let's pull the base out. Again, the base is pretty easy to snap on. And... I mean, wow, you know, getting this on the table, having this thing, I mean, your normal minis are about that big. I mean, this thing is huge, super detailed. Yeah, I'm going to have to paint these. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to get away with not painting them. So anyway, that is the Rock Breaker, very fearsome enemy. I love the... Uh, Sawtooth's mouse and can't wait to see how he plays on the on the battlefield. So alright, so the next boss that we're gonna look at is the Fire Claw. Fire Claw expansion. Uh, so on the Frozen Wilds expansion we saw the Frost Claws, which were decent sized grizzly bear type characters uh, that operate off of an ice theme. The Fire Claw is their much bigger, much nastier cousin that operates under fire. So let's take a peek. Alrighty. So the Fire Claw is a little bit smaller than some of the other bosses that are out there, but that's okay. He's still very intimidating, very cool. He's got these cutting blades on his arms and his big claws so I still wouldn't want to mess with it but at least and I wouldn't want to mess with it but I'm sure the uh, hunter characters in Horizon will be more than happy to try and take this guy out so very cool I'm curious as to what the special mechanics are going to be for him our next mega boss is the Stormbird this boss is usually found in mountainous areas in the video game, and it is huge. I mean, we're talking a... it's the size of a commercial airplane. I mean, this is big, nasty machine that could uh, totally wreck your day in the game. But look at... I mean, this is... Look at all the stuff that's in here. This is kind of crazy. So let me see if I can pull all of these parts out. I mean, look at this. That is huge. There's my hand. I've got fairly big hands. I mean, I barely even cover one wing. putting it all together that is standing several inches off of the ground and a ginormous wingspan I have never seen miniatures like this before this is this is crazy um, I, uh, I'm so stoked I love this miniature this is one of the best so anyway I uh, let's move on to the last boss character, uh, the one that 
most people recognize from this video game. And of course, saving the last boss monster, the best boss monster. Horizon Zero Dawn's advertisements, everything has been, wait, you get to fight a robot Tyrannosaurus Rex? Yes, you do. This is the Thunderjaw. Ooh, I'm already excited. Thunderjaw character. All various stuff. And of course, more cards to play with. <laughs> okay, this, this is a beefy boy. There we go. So he's a little bit smaller than the Stormbird, just in terms of the Stormbird's ridiculous wing length. But there's a reason why this is the most interesting character in the Horizon Zero Dawn game. I mean, look at this. This is crazy. Details are super nice. This is a great miniature. I may have to find a shelf to just put the Thunderjaw, the Stormbird, the other boss characters, and just have them stand there and <laughs> just be like, yep, these are the miniatures. So, cannot wait to play with this guy. This guy is crazy. And that might be a reason for deciding to glue them together. But for now, we'll put him back in the box. Of course, we saw a few boss characters, but like any other video game that's out there, there has to be one final boss. And that final boss is found in the heart of the Nora expansion. Now this is interesting. I'm not seeing any cards or anything in here. Maybe they're tucked underneath somewhere. But first off, you have the Corruptors. Also, these are in a different colored plastic. That's kind of cool, too. To indicate that they are, you know, the forever evil versions. There's no docile versions of Corruptors. They are specifically, maliciously against your character. And then the big guy on this one. Oh, there's the cards. Okay. The Deathbringer. So the Deathbringer in the video game, you meet a few of them. But the final one, of course, has all of these weapons active and ready to go. These are, in the lore, basically walking armies in their own right. Um, if you run into one of these, the expectation is, is that you are not going to survive the encounter. Of course, we have our hero character who does so, but you know, that's why they're the hero. And as usual, cards, more cards. It's always good to have cards. But yeah, I do really like that they made these out of a different colored plastic. Uh, to indicate that they are truly evil characters versus just potential minions or something. So, that's really cool. So the last box that we're going to look at today is going to be the Kickstarter exclusives. I really appreciate what Steamforge Games have done here in making the Kickstarter exclusives box look very similar to the rest of the retail package. Most of the time when you're looking at these Kickstarter exclusives, because they aren't coming to retail, they tend to come in cheaper boxes. They can tend to come in lower quality ones. Maybe a simple white box with maybe a logo on it. That's about it. But Steamforge said no, they're going to make this box look exactly the same as all the other ones, which I think is fantastic. There's a lot of cards in the uh, in this one. And of course, one of those cards is Aloy. So Aloy is the main character of the video game. 
Uh, normally she's not playable unless of course you have the Kickstarter exclusive. I don't know how exactly she comes in, but I think she replaces a regular hunter. Um, I don't know if that's a temporary or permanent thing. We'll have to play the game. So we have some Shadow Karja. Again, they are in that darker color. I really appreciate that because the darker color, again, indicates characters that are, have been corrupted and are truly evil versus just trying to survive in the world. Some lighter colored enemies. A ton more player characters. And then, of course, the two big ones. You have Aloy, the hero. And then just for kicks and giggles, Aloy riding on a strider. I think that model's pretty neat. Definitely one that needs painted, of course. And the one other thing that I got, just as an extra, was I bought an extra set of dice. I guess my only regret is I should have bought three more sets of dice so that all four players had their own set but I'll survive with two sets of dice and that is all of the boxes for Horizon Zero Dawn's expansions I, I, excuse me I gotta move this otherwise I'm not gonna be on camera I mean just look at this this is crazy you know when we were playing the core game, it felt a little light, and I was waiting for the expansions, but... Oh boy, this makes this game a hell of a lot bigger, which I think is awesome! The video game was great, I 100%ed it, and I am super stoked that I 100%ed the board game as well. I am going to play every single one of these expansions. I can't decide which one I'm going to play first. Probably the Thunderjaw. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I hope you decide that if you've got the core game, you're going to pick up one or two of these expansions. I just... I am beyond words. I... I, I yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. This is Bevan with Know Your Role Entertainment, signing off. Now where the heck am I going to put these in my shelves? Thanks again for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts by commenting below. If you liked what you saw and would like to see more, I'd appreciate the gesture of giving me a like and a subscribe. If you have suggestions for future videos, please let me know. And again, thanks for watching. May your table always be graced with a game. And always remember, 